In this tutorial, we'll consider some situations that are common to you, so you can better understand FNET and how it relates to Newton's first law. This whole story is a series of events as you ride in a car on your way to a store. Considered with your new understanding of motion and forces, consider this carefully. You're in a car. You're all started and ready to go. At this point, the car is sitting still. Considering only the horizontal forces, there are no forces currently acting on the car. So the car is still and the F net is zero. There is no motion change. If we didn't do anything else for the day, the motion of the car isn't going to change and it'll continue to sit there. Of course, we want to get somewhere. So we push on the gas pedal. And this effectively adds an applied force to our car. Let's say the applied force is 2,000 newtons. But then once we start moving, we'll also have the frictional forces acting on the car, opposing our motion. The friction forces include all the forces within the car that resist it moving forward, including friction in the engine, transmission, drive shaft, tires, and even wind resistance. It would mean that we would have a net force of 2,000 newtons for the applied force minus 1,000 newtons for the friction force in the opposite direction. So we have 1,000 newtons to the right. We have a net force, so the car's motion will change. And the change would be from us sitting still to starting to go fast down the road. Now, we're cruising along down the road, and once we get close to the speed limit, we back off on the gas pedal, and we can see that the applied force will drop down. Now, you're already at the speed you want, so you no longer need to change the car's motion. You just want to keep going at 50 kilometers per hour. Therefore, the applied force must equal the friction force. And so the F net is 1,000 newtons minus the frictional force of 1,000 newtons, and we have a net force of zero. The forces are balanced. And according to Newton's first law, our car is going to continue at the same motion. It will continue going 50 kilometers per hour straight down the road as long as we keep that F net at zero. We're currently going down the road at 50 kilometers per hour and the net force is zero. No changes in motion are currently happening. But then we look up ahead and we see a traffic light turn yellow. We're far enough away that we know we're going to be stopping. Therefore, we take our foot off the gas. Now this eliminates the applied force. Now we only have a frictional force in our free body diagram. And it's 1000 newtons. We say that the net force is currently 1000 newtons to the left. And this means that the motion is going to start to change. The speed is going to start to drop. As you get closer, you realize that you're still going 30 kilometers per hour in that your speed is dropping slowly. So we need to drop that speed more quickly. So what are you going to do to get a bigger frictional force? Well, if we hit the brakes, it adds an extra big internal friction. You suddenly have a frictional force of say 2000 newtons to the left. Now our F net is 2,000 newtons to the left, and this will slow down the car much more quickly. Okay, so you've come to a nice stop, and you, along with everyone else, wait for the light to turn green. While waiting, you aren't touching the gas, so the applied force is zero, and with no movement, the friction force is also zero. The net force is back to zero. If you don't change the forces acting on the car, the motion won't change. And of course, 
It'll just continue sitting there at the light. But the light turns green and the traffic starts to move. And at this point, you need to make the applied force greater than the frictional force to get the motion to start to change again. Again, you push on the gas and let's say you get the applied force up to 2000 newtons. This overpowers the 1000 newton frictional force and we have a net force of 1,000 newtons to the right. We start speeding up again. Motion is changing. And again, as you get to the speed limit, you back off the gas. The next time you're in a car, or on a bike, or in a plane, or on a boat, consider the net force acting on the various stages of your trip. When is the net force pushing you forward and speeding you up? When is your motion not changing? When is the net force against your motion and slowing you down? Forcing yourself to consider these situations with your new knowledge will make you smarter in appreciating forces and motion in the world all around you.